there there uh there we go uh dennis we've had a, a week of oh. uh hbo it's been a week uh, oh no oh no it's gone by so quickly no it's been two weeks because i was oh. i was in france land for <laughs> well a ain't i the asshole <laughs> yeah uh with uh with my with my folks they came over and we had a good jolly old time in french land with all the frenchies there are stories to tell there are stories to be told yes and uh and yeah it was uh it was good yeah it's crazy to me that like france is a two-hour drive away yeah, like just, uh, and and that yeah. just gets you uh, just across the border into France. Where so when you cross the border, what do you show them? Your passport and you're in. Nope, not nothing. Just uh, cross the border, open border. Yeah, what there is is uh, there's a uh, the highway to get there is a toll road, and so there is a place where they stop you and have you pay the toll but uh but it's the same as other places before that and after that uh where you stop to pay a toll so uh it was like when i took my parents to when i took my parents from where we were staying in france to the airport in spain uh we crossed the border and didn't notice like uh, yeah what the the way that i that i normally notice is that uh, the the font changes on the signs huh. like they have a different typography on the sure, signs of course uh so what do they use each of them i can't name them oh, but i thought uh, you knew your font sorry no i'm that's not a uh, i'm not a font of knowledge uh the uh, yeah, the <clears throat> like I I prefer the Spanish one, but like that's just what I'm used to. Like the yeah French one is super legible as well. It's well, slightly, I noticed when a local taller. university changed their fonts, and they went from uh, what appeared to me to be a uh, German to what appears to me to be Calibri. And what's interesting about oh, scandalous the Calibri is softer. It's actually less business like. It's a friendlier font, and it immediately made me think that the college, the university knew that when they picked it, you know, uh, it's interesting because there's a lot to this, none of which you're particularly interested in. If you're not, you will say something like, huh, well, whatever. I, I love, I love fonts. Oh, uh, you do. I am interested in fonts. So. Sans Serif, Helvetica. Yeah, baby. Gothic. Yeah. I like the kind that, that turns it into a code. And then in order to get the code, you go and you got to change the font. And then the words come up. Like the wingdings. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, anyway, so you had a good, they had a good trip. You, you went to France not only to stay at a nice place, but there must have been something going on. Uh, aside... No, aside from Easter, uh, not really. It was the destination. Um, it was a destination, and uh, my parents chose the uh, the best possible uh, place to stay. We like we were in an Airbnb, uh, probably a hundred and fifty year old building uh, in the dead center of town. And like the building was so old that like the floors were uneven. Uh -huh. Like you you walked around and you 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 were like, whoa, am I drunk? No, it's just the floors are, are weird. Oh, not yet. Oh. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, but we were just in the damn center of everything, and it was it was a hundred yard walk to the beach where they have this. Uh, we were staying in Saint John de Luz, which is uh, a beach town that was made famous because a bunch of 
royalty 150 years ago uh, started going there. Summered um, there. <clears throat> yes, they summered. Uh, but it's this natural sort of a crescent beach, which is uh -huh. which is very nice. And they've since built uh, dikes to control the uh, to control all the waves. Uh, but so we were right in the middle of town and also like a right the quick watch walk from the beach and it was just uh you could not have placed a pin on the map in a better location than that was and how that, uh, how town. long were you there how many nights a uh, full week uh, oh, really? so it was a friday all the way no more than a week uh Friday, and then we went all the way through the next Friday and the next Saturday night, and then we left on the Sunday. So, wow. uh, now, was days. there lots to do there? Did you go out to eat a lot? I mean, how what was the setup? Uh, so, uh, my uh, almost 10 year old, um, we gave him the task of counting how many restaurants were on this little street in the in the hundred yards to from our house to the beach. And I think he came up with, uh, was it 12 or 24? There was a bunch of restaurants. Uh, wow. And it was all amazing good food, like to the point where towards the end of the week, we were like, uh, I can't eat any, I can't eat any more delicious food. Like we need to, I felt the need to slow down on the, on the food consumption because eating a, eating out for lunch and then for dinner uh, and sometimes for breakfast is like uh, too much. Yeah. Uh, but it was all amazing and delicious. Um, what was your favorite dish? Favorite dish. So when I, f so when I first got there, I went a little, uh, went a little extreme with, uh, the steak tartare, uh -huh. which is the French thing that they do where it's like raw ground beef um, marinated with uh, onions and vinegar and stuff. And then they put a raw egg yolk on top of it, uh -huh. uh, which is Delicious. very, very strange. And it's like, it's one of these dishes. I've had it maybe five times in my life. Uh, it's one of these things that, like, it's so dangerous to eat that I only trust like restaurants. Why uh, is it dangerous to eat? Because it's because it's raw meat. Oh, uh -huh. oh right, right. Like, right. there's salmonella possibility. Right. Like the 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 beef that they serve for that has been designated from when it was still walking around as a cow uh, to be that right. particular dish uh, is my understanding. And so they, it's super tightly controlled. Um, like now, you can't you, just, you can't just go. Do you eat your burgers and steaks rare anyway? Uh, I have been, uh, since, since moving to Europe, I have been converted to, um, to a more bloody uh, cut, uh, well, but I, I, it's, uh, I ask because the the taste of raw burger, which I've had, um, is the extreme of rare, obviously uncooked, but it's really not bloody. No, it isn't cook, at all. When you cook something rare, it'll be bloody because the heat draws the blood out of it. But raw hamburger isn't bloody. Yeah. So according to my wife, the uh, veterinarian specializing in meat, uh, what what the red liquid that comes out of steaks that are rare is not actually blood it's like uh it's just water and uh some proteins and stuff moisture within it's the meat not, that mingles it is not with, blood in any mingles with the it's something makes it red 
Right. Which would be a little bit of blood, maybe. Well, I mean, I don't think I don't think blood is what makes uh, steak red before you cook it. What I do think you think? It's like that's the color of the of the of the cells. The juices. I mean, the the cells. Uh, your. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. Uh, I don't want to speak where I don't uh, for once. I don't <laughs> want to speak where, where I don't where I'm not sure it's about never, what I'm talking about. Never stopped you before. You can you can wax poetic. I want to know the difference. Yeah, well, I, you you might say I very well read about this and make something up entirely about cell structure and how they're actually a pink, a spongy in nature, and when they're heated, the the juice comes and it's not having to do with blood at all. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, no. And <laughs> pink slime is a whole other topic. Uh, so anyway, it. this was your favorite meal. So uh, it was, it was, but then uh, after that, I proceeded to have like two days with pretty bad uh, diarrhea and even some vomiting. So, oh dear God! So well, so no. Let's. So it's not on the recommended list. Well, causality is hard to uh, to attain in life, right? It's like I ate fifty different things that I normally don't eat, and then who knows, right? I was not, and then I was no bueno, uh, but. So who knows exactly what uh, was the cause of my irritation, but uh, I don't know. It's not like it's not like other times where you know how sometimes where you eat a thing and then you're sick and then like you don't want to even look or think about that particular food for another couple of years. Uh, that has not happened uh, for this particular time, but. Who knows? Um, it uh, it was, it, and then we had just some amazing other fish and steak and. Tell me about the fish. <clears throat> well, uh, there was a lot of cod. Uh huh. And but other other fish Deep as fried. well. Deep fried, like fish fried. No, uh, not uh, not like um, fish and chips. Not like fish and chips. No, uh, it was not cooked in that way. Although that's the way I will often cook it at home. Yes, uh, cooked it maybe cooked in a. Uh, but in no, a, it was there was more uh, broiled, steamed, more more uh, different flavor. Yeah, steam probably. Um, it was steamed in filament. This this paper, parchment paper, is a is a good way to cook it. And I've seen a lot of, I think, more European uh, servings of it with onion, pepper, a little bit of squash, butter, seasoning. Wrap it up in this paper and cook it slow. Keeps all the juices in. So on our on our final night there, uh, so my my parents. Uh, booked the Airbnb from uh, Friday night uh, with a departure on the following Sunday, you know, eight days later or whatever, um, nine days later. And, uh, but they left on the Saturday morning be be before. So uh, my, yeah, night and day. my wife and kids and I had a day there without, without my parents. Oh. Um, and, uh, that evening, for the first time, uh, we had dinner in the restaurant that was below our apartment oh. because we had this beautiful restaurant that was below our apartment that was uh, on the on on the pricey side, um, but it would but um, but yeah, for some reason we never ended up going there with my parents huh. uh, because there were so many other restaurants around. Sure. And uh, so on the final night, uh, we went there. And uh, my kids, when they when they finished when they finished their their meal, they were like, "So can we like go upstairs to 
you know to read their books or play on their on their devices or whatever and we were like sure and so they knew the the access code to get into the to the apartment and stuff and so it was just we're at a restaurant and we're like yeah sure you kids can go home upstairs uh, upstairs uh and also we had like wi-fi there that was like the wi-fi from the from the apartment um but on that night uh the waiter came over and said um our <clears throat> our catches of the day are um uh, sea bass and hake and and these different these different four different things uh and you can get one of these to share between two people and uh and, just, and so i talked my wife into getting one of these to share and uh so you it, bought two it's one fish right to to share uh and it was amazing just like melted which your mouth. was it did you say uh, I didn't say. I forget exactly. Let's go with sea bass. Well, sea bass is at the absolute top of my list. So tender and white, flaky. Yes, and flaky it, it, it was cooked, right. It was so garlicky, and it just like crumbled in your mouth, uh, but held firm on the fork. Like you could grab it yeah. with a fork, but then once it's in your mouth, it just turns to butter. Uh, yeah. and that was uh, pretty freaking amazing so there's that uh, well that sounds great I uh, I speaking of fish I just I just got back from our new spot Jojo here my my brother's here for a visit cool and it's a fishing a brewery extravaganza <laughs> and last week uh when we were on break, I went fishing on a Wednesday, which I never do because I need to be back for this. So I went on a Wednesday, which was perfect during the week and ended up doing pretty good on the Pierre Marquette. Hooked about seven fish, landed a nice brown trout about 16 inches and last fish of the day hooked up with what would appear to have been an eight or nine pound uh, uh, lake trout or not lake trout, I said it's steelhead, which is what I was after. And these are real brilliant purple or blue or red uh, stripe up the side of them. And they're uh, andromedous, meaning they live part of their life in the stream and part of their life in the, in the lake or ocean. And they live for years. So the bigger ones are quite big. Andromedous? I think that's the word. It could have it been is. androgynous, but I don't think so. Ascending rivers from the sea for breeding. Bring like, like salmon. Yep. So uh, when you get a big one like that, it might be two, three years old. And I had it on, and it was on eight pound test. It was about a 10 pound fish anyway. And uh, I never not, got it. It's not andromedous. It's anadromous. 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 There you go. Whew. Thank God we so, got but, but what a great day that I caught these fish and landed them and I fished for six hours and ended up with a fish in the net and a good picture which I'll probably send you and blah blah blah. You probably won't. So I go home and the next day I met my local one of my local pubs here called the Old Dog. My favorite hangouts. They got a great anchor steam amber beer that's just fabulous. And um Sometimes sell Smittix by the tap during St. Patty's week. But as I'm standing at the bar, I'm talking to this guy next to me about, you know, somebody was talking about fishing over that side of the bar. So I jumped in and talking fishing and <laughs> showing a picture and a guy at the end of the bar. Hey, I do that says, too. Says, so, so what tributary were you at? And I said, um, uh, I almost Name your said, tributary, son. I wasn't on a tributary. I was on a river. Oh, uh, damn. But, uh, uh, but you know, but but here's the story. He, uh, I said, well, I was at Pierre Marquette. He said, oh, man, I fished. Have you grew up there for steelhead? I said, yeah, man. And we're talking fish. And, and he said, hey, it's been a couple years. Have you ever heard of uh, Swan Lake and Swan Dam and 
uh, uh, where where Swan Creek uh, is fed from the dam when the dam is open. And I said, no, where where is it? And he said, well, it's it's about 35 minutes from here. Jean-Claude, Jean-Claude Swan Dam. I've heard of him. <laughs> That's it. So I said, yeah. He said, yeah, back in the day, you know, the, the, the salmon, or the salmon, Jesus Christ, the steelhead would swim to go up the river to spawn. But, of course, they hit the dam. They can't go over the dam. So yeah, right there where the, creek, where the creek starts at the dam, there's a big pool. And I've been there, and I've caught five, six in a day, and they were – they were all in a pool there. And I said, oh, how do you get there? Blah, blah, blah. blah, 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 blah. I write it down on a napkin and memorize it. My brother comes and gets here on a Saturday. We go out, listen to live music, out of favor, boys. Big shout out. Because yeah, he baby. says, we're sitting in the backyard. He just drove in. We're having a beer. And he says, uh, he says what are you doing tonight? I said, oh, we'll go out and hit a couple breweries. He said, it's too bad out of favor, boys, in playing somewhere. Tony. T-Bone, the sax player. Tony. My favorite, favorite band in town, T-Bone. And uh, while he's not looking, I Google it, and sure enough, they're playing. So he doesn't know it, but we stop at a brewery, then we stop at another place, and I'm kind of lollygagging kind of late because they don't start at 8. And as luck would have it, as we pull into the joint, we could have hit Tony with our car because he was walking in from his car. And JoJo then realized that not only were we going to hear T-Bone and Out of Favor Boys play, but there, in fact, was the T-Bone himself. Nice. Who told Joe, I saw you a year ago today at this bar. And he was absolutely right. A year ago that, that to, the, to, to the day. If, 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 if Tony's walking in this direction and you hit him with your car in this direction, do you T-Bone, T-Bone? encourage... We'd encourage him toward the building. No, but like if you if you if you hit him on the side when he's walking in one direction, do you T bone T bone? <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. you you put you put a couple things together there. It was pretty yeah, pretty I'm, impressive. I'm awake. Pretty impressive. But Speaking anyway, that's not the point of my story, of course. But anyway, that was the first night, and then the second night we went to a live blues jam and. At one point, there were seven very talented musicians up jamming, playing blues with a woman singer. Uh, uh, remember her name, uh, Lisa. Uh, Lisa, what? Uh, I'll remember it later. But Lisa, mm -hmm. I never, I knew her. I never, Lisa I knew she sang. Morelli. I never, Chilton. Lisa Chilton. That's what I was. Her daddy saying. was a blues guitarist, apparently, and she has a voice that's like Susan Tedeschi. She mm. has got some vocals, so we message. had a great time there. And then the and, and that's only in the second night. And that day, of course, it's a fishing extravaganza. You said, "Where are we going?" I said, "Well, we're going to try this Swan Creek, Swan Dam, that creates Swan Lake." John, never Claude. been there, but I met this guy. His name is Andy. Okay. He's a drummer. Blah blah blah. That's what he told. I say, well, who knows? I think maybe because the water's been high because of the tornadic, like floods. Tornadic. Yep. Um, that uh, the water rose and bigger fish would come up and, you know, be a good year for it. Get there, there's another car there. We come down and there's two guys fishing in right at the base of the dam where the water is like all roiled and spraying like crazy. And he's got a fish about yay big, 20, 20 24 inches on a stick with the fishes on a stick and the stick is in the ground and the fish is laying there bzz, and flies flying around whatever we go out well, on a stick we know there's fish we go down where there's not a fisherman there were a couple of fishermen there we turn the corner we look in the water it's two to three feet deep and we see in our vision in the water over 30 of these giant fish these steelhead they are they are some are 30 inches long we've never seen more than one or two ever in a spot right and here they are literally as the saying goes stacked up like cordwood and within a matter of minutes i had three on and wait that's how the saying goes it's stacked up 
like cordwood. Stacked up like cordwood. Yes. It's not like shooting them in a barrel. No. That's another saying. But it, but you float stuff in front of them. Uh, and then we went again today with half as many fish, and we did just as well. And the first two fish I caught went after my orange fake egg, my fly, my egg, and snatched it with such ferocity that it immediately just started taking line out. Zzz, 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 hit it and went. And it was 24 inches long, probably six, eight pounds. And I landed four today, including one that was probably 30 inches. This is the, this is the most fish, the, the most um, steelhead that I've ever seen all together in my entire life. All wow. the years I've been, if you added up all the steelhead I saw in the water for 70 years, 69 years, it would add up to X. This was 3X. Damn. That's, it's, it was an event. Went back and ended up, had a great day today. Joe landed one. He was zero for nine the other day. <laughs> had nine fish on, didn't land any. I was three for 15. And then well, today I was, um, I was, I say four, I should say three and a half. I had one up on the bank and, and I let that bent down to take the hook out. And, uh, before I could snap my fingers, he was back in the water, kind of landed, kind of not, but I count him. Meh. A, I have additional information, uh, surrounding the word anadromous. So anadromous means uh, fish that live in the sea and come into freshwater to spawn. Yes. But, but there's the opposite of that. Catadromous. Those are fish that live in the freshwater and go to the sea to spawn. Oh. An example What's of that the would be the call again? catadromous. Catadromous. These are definitely not catadromous. No. Uh, so American eels are... The North America's only species of catadromous fish, and one. those are uh, pests. They suck on the side of fish and suck the nutrients out of their bloodstream. I mean, you're jumping to judgment very quickly like the on, the, on the eel. Party. So, like the Republican Party. Yeah. So, where can we? I I think we can. Uh, dock the fishing boat for now uh where can we docked where can we go uh we've got some television and oh big time and session some like uh to barry and some like politics too finally barry after all these years i think we should start with succession okay i have watched it uh, one and a half times uh, the the most recent. Well, first of all, first of all, uh, when we were a week apart, uh, they had the most amazing episode ever that like I watched when I was in France. Um, that wow, it was. It surprised everyone, I think. Like, it was I don't, chaos. I don't, it was chaos. And uh, it was, I remember, like, uh, like I think I emailed you. The, the first part of it was so hilarious because they were just making these jokes after jokes. And then when, uh, when Logan, uh, I, specifically remember when he was walking up the stairs to get into the plane uh he did this really he he said something it was it was really it was really badass but like it 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 he started said, it's time to get aggressive and he stormed up the stairs and, blah 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 it's time to get aggressive but they they started with the theme music i don't know that they've always done this in fact, I don't think that they have, but they started with the theme music before they cut to the, uh, to the opening theme thing and succession 
like it's one of my favorite uh theme songs it's just so, so good it really like, is I, I listen to it every time all the way through because that just the love, yeah the power the, of the bass yeah. and the and the delicateness of the piano is just um it's just lovely well on the camera work where the children are getting their picture yes. taken yes. and you see a flash of dad's pant leg yes and they all swerve toward him because he's such a uh, 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 distant and, and sacred figure. Yes. Always walking away, always, but they live in such luxury and they were riding elephants and, 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 and whatnot. And, and it's astounding. Uh, I, I agree uh, with you, but I will remind you of something. The episode before that, I said, what did you think of the ending? And you weren't all that clear. And I said, and you were like, he's so fat. I said, remember this, they wanted you to see how old and tired and fat he was. And you were, you looked a little like, yeah, whatever. And I said, because why else would they put him in a bright red plaid shirt? So you'd absolutely notice his gut. You, you yes, did say that. I did. And uh, we had forgotten that he was sick. There was so much of the first part where he was near death and going to die. That's what it's all about. His succession. That's I mean, why. He, that's literally the title of the of the show. <laughs> uh, that's that's why. <laughs> literally, but because he was he was he almost died, and that's what made him think I better take care of my succession. And then he felt better, of course, as we learned. What. What do you think about how how they never showed him the the actor like all the time they're doing chest compressions no, and stuff? Wrong. They showed him once. They showed him once. Just when you were thinking how odd it was that they didn't show him and wondering whether all it was fake. Right. I wasn't whether... wondering if it, if it was fake. I was wondering like if shit if something can actually happen to the actor or if there had been like a country like it felt so sudden yes uh that they did, it, they it did felt like it felt like the sort of thing that uh that they could have uh that say uh i forget the actor's name but uh s s like say he got upset and and uh said mm, fuck the show i'm not doing this anymore it, it felt almost like they were had to like quickly write off uh write that character right. out of the show but or you, you somehow missed that they showed him at the end of the scene uh, yeah okay but, well, i mean it's it, it was important because up until that point there wasn't a person watching and wasn't wondering why they weren't showing them and if they were going to show them because unless they showed them we we might we might have been thinking and talking right now that it was a hoax that he didn't die that this was all some extraordinary ruse on his part to sniff them out and to you know of course that 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 theory didn't last long they carried his freaking body out of the plane but they did show him I, I never thought it was fake. Uh, you never thought at any point during in all the universe that, of the like, show. I never yes, thought that that's what that, I meant. that Logan was was fucking oh, with I the did. kids. To, to to it crossed my mind that this was this insane ruse on his part, partly because Tom's demeanor was weird. Well, he is Tom. Well, he is Tom, right? But they didn't show. Him. And that's why I thought it. And then they showed him, and then I said, oh, my God. Of course, I was saying, oh, my God, anyway. And how did you like his – what's his assistant's name uh, with the black hair? Oh, um, yeah, when she came in, like, all smiley? Sm yeah. <laughs> so nervous and, 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 and smiling. She sure got a rude awakening in uh, the second uh, – the next episode, episode number four. So episode so number four I, was pretty fascinating. I have, uh, I suffer from, 
smiling around bad news in a way that like I sympathize with her. She You smile when you have bad news? I, I have been known to deliver bad news with uh with the wrong sort of straight face. Yeah. So uh, are you doing it because you enjoy telling one some some of these sad news? I don't know. I can't explain why, but it's um it's are you I like, don't know. I told you you look like the guy from the Adams family. Is it true? Right. So there you go. Uh no but but so oh, really? we were we were made to uh wonder by that performance. Well, also, like we knew that she was uh, shit on on TV, like smiling when she was delivering. Oh yeah, right, uh, right. Uh, you know, news about some tragedy somewhere. Uh, so we we had a little bit of background for that, but uh, like the the impression was, oh, she thinks she's just struck it rich by. Uh, by sleeping with this old with this old billionaire for well, for we find bit. out in the next episode that that she's Indeed. telling telling uh, Roman while they're picking up her scattered things. He was talking about marrying me. Will you just look into it? Will you just look into it? She's fresh out of luck, and the old that lady was... sell, the old lady sells the house to Connor on the spot for sixty three million dollars. Oh, 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 let's let's roll back roll back for a sec. Uh, like I like I said in the email, what an amazing title for the episode of Connor's Wedding. Uh, what was the name? Of it? The, the the title of the episode where he dies is hmm, uh, Connor's Wedding, which is like it's, it's true. It's what they're all preparing for. Right. And and he's well, all like the the reason that Shiv isn't there to say her her goodbyes is that she's been chosen to go tell Connor that uh, no actually he's not coming, uh, but the I don't know it was well disguised like I don't think anyone started that episode thinking that that was going to happen. The previews of the season said that the third that they went at, the one I read said. We're not going to give away a thing here. There's no spoilers, but let's just say that the third episode, every relationship you thought you understood changes. Wow. So, and 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 the, the next episode, in fact, you know, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Jeremy Strong's character, uh, Kennel or Ken, uh, Kendall, 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 who. Remember the theory that I exposed, espoused was exposed. the reason that he was smiling in the final scene of episode yes. two was because he just screwed the deal out of his father for the lifetime because he hated him so much that even though it meant he wouldn't get his money, which he would eventually get probably, um, but it meant that his siblings wouldn't get theirs and he knew that if they up the price to Matson, Matson would walk, and that right. So now the tables have turned, and he's and the bunch of them got to deal with Matson and what's going to happen. And uh, the next episode is when they get together with the uh, 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 what's his name, the guy who runs a uh, uh, Gojo, uh, Scarsgard. Uh, yeah. Character, um, the Swede, yeah, is Nathan or I don't Nathan know. or Nathaniel or something like that, and uh, it's just it's just getting more and more fascinating. It's just more and more fascinating. The the I told you this before that when and I don't know that you use the transcripts on the bottom of ca closed caption. I do, and the funeral, the death scene, Logan's death scene when the three children had to talk on the phone, for me, was the view of it plus all the words. And so all the strange stops and starts, I'll never forgive you, I love you, I hate yes. you, Was it was so, I had to watch, as soon as the scene was over, a little later in the show, I think when the show was over, I went back to that scene and shut the, 
closed caption off so I could just see the face now that I knew right. it was e- it was even more delightful. The writing and the acting where they are just all over themselves. They don't complete sentences all the time. No, no, no. It, they're much more realistic than that. How? You know, yeah, it was very real. And um, I actually uh, listened to an interview with the guy that plays uh, Kendall's best friend that kind of always screws him over. Oh, his uh, name is... Uh, it's like not Sandy. That's the Kandali. old man. But yeah. Kandali um, or Kunduni maybe. But uh, so I heard an interview with that actor and he talked about how they were, how they uh, shot these these scenes and uh a lot of it was sort of improvised like um he was when when shiv is all upset because she's sort of been outplayed and uh and she's all angry and she sees people that are laughing and she's like stop laughing this is uh and then uh so he, he was one of those people uh, and he recalls you know that they they had totally come up with a reason for them for them to be for them to be laughing uh but then like when she does that thing where she like falls down the stairs yeah uh it wasn't in the script but like he felt the need to like go and help her up uh and like that's what was ended up in the in the final in the final show uh just like he was embodying his character so so deeply that like uh this this woman that i that i sort of know and care about uh, has fallen down i'm gonna go i'm gonna help her up uh but it like wasn't I thought that was a very odd <clears throat> bit i didn't and now it, it's next it's, it's explainable it didn't well and so it, it was it was just i i think uh, I assume it was intentional that it was scripted. Uh, maybe it wasn't, uh, but well, I assume I assume it was about just showing how flustered she was. But you said that this guy said it wasn't scripted. Well, h- him going to help her up wasn't oh. scripted. Uh, her her potentially falling probably was, but it. Um, I wouldn't have her fall. That was the thing about it is that. You saw on camera her literally fall. You would never see that on camera. They would have a double who would fall. They would they would show her stumble. They wouldn't show the floor because there's a mattress there. Right. And then it would cut to her on the floor. You know, they would they would never they wouldn't allow her to to do that bit of acting. That's why I, now that I think of it, that's why it was odd. So I I have some information about this season that uh, maybe you haven't noticed or uh, don't know is apparently this season every episode is a single day oh I didn't know that so the uh, so far every like uh, we just watched uh, three and four I guess maybe right um so every episode has been a single day and at the end of the 10 days is the election i think of um, the president or something so yes uh so we're building Who's up a romans romans buddy who shiv hates yeah so we're we're building up to um to that and every every episode this season is a single day which is kind of crazy and interesting because it compresses uh time like you you know whatever happens it 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 makes uh it constrains you narratively like that yeah. TV show, that TV show called Twenty Four, uh, that right. Jennifer Sutherland was in, where it was literally every episode is an hour of the time in this in this world. Uh, that was really wild that they could even pull that off, and it's not a, it's not surprising that no one's done that since because that seems like really difficult. But uh, 
So what did you think of the fourth episode? It was good. Uh, it, uh, yeah. My favorite the, moment, my favorite, well, one of my more memorable moments, I don't know if it was my favorite or not. I'll have to watch it again to figure that out. But was when Shiv was saying, oh, is it crossed out? Or, I mean, it because part of it kind of was the underline went a little astray at the end of it. Or is it crossed out? And Kendall's saying, well, I'm just saying this is what he said. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And she keeps arguing. He looks at her and he says, well, it sure as fuck doesn't say Shiv. Yes, that's so good. The <laughs> And I thought, oh, man, Kendall is back. That, and in fact, he was. That piece of paper is going to haunt him for the rest of his days. The is it underlined or crossed out question. Uh, because you can't, you can't know. And you just are going to always have to wonder. Um, and isn't it, isn't it fascinating the way that Tom plays tries to play each of the yes we're, I'm here we're, 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 we're Roman he, his, he has never been wormier yes he's never been wormier than than this when, when, when Roman says uh, uh, Tom Wom lip, lip balm Tom Wom's gonna lip uh, uh, lubricate his lips to kiss my ass or whatever kiss uh, my butt that's so good. Uh, yeah. And he, you know, remember the phone call that uh, Roman left a voice message with his dad. And one of the things that he yes. asked during his dad's death, he looked, he looked at, uh, he looked at his brother and sister and said, do you think that before he died, he listened to his voice messages? <laughs> yes. And they said, what, what, what a stupid question. And then Tom, being the snake that he is, just here to serve when they're doing the eulogy, he's leaning over to Greg and saying, you fucking kid me. This fucking man of the world died after he dropped his phone into the toilet. And, and, then, and then when Greg tries to do a similar uh, thing, Tom, uh, a similar quip, Tom is like, shut up, that's stupid. Right. Right. Stay in your station, and Greg, and Greg's got a, a question mark next to his name on the piece of paper. <laughs> Which you sent, you sent one of the best scenes to me. Yes. When uh, I don't know what the, what his name is. He's one of the. He's a CFO. Yeah. Carl. Carl. Yeah. Carl, I believe. He says, "Well, let me just be hypothetical here and just." You know, I mean, this is what the negative would be. You're just a, a mealy mouth, wormy son of a bitch, and the only guy who liked you is dead. So you're married to the dead man's daughter, and she doesn't like you either. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, very, very, very cutting. And Tom says, uh, well, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Carl. Right. So I'd like to ceremony, ceremoniously open a uh, French beer that I have that is uh, Cerise et Piment. It's um, cherry and pepper is the wow. flavor of the beer. Wow. Well, you'll be annoyed at this, but I have to run and get one. I know. Fine. Fuck off. So what I just drank was a uh, finished was a uh, steelhead red from Nuevo Brewing Company on the mighty Muskegon River. That was a draft, and they put it in a thirty-two ounce can for me and canned it on the spot. Sent me home with it. Canned you seen it that done? Spot. No, I've never seen. So on demand canning. They're selling grogs of beer, you know, real nice glass jugs of beer and. I said, well, I love this beer. I'd like to take some with me, but I don't want to pay ten bucks for the for the glass jug. She said, Oh, well, we've got. Well, you can sell it in a can. I said, You can some too. She said, No, I'm going to can the draft. Is that what you want? Can the draft? She said, Yeah. 
I said, yeah. So she took a, a can that had no top on it, a 32 ounce can, no top on it. Sure. Filled it up at the, at the, at the, 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 the wand, <laughs> beer, whatever it's called. The tap. And, 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 and it was o- kind of overflowing a little bit. So when she put the top on, it was floating. And then she pushed it down to make sure there was no air in it. Mm-hmm. Perfectly top, you know, can top. Then she put it in a machine that sealed it, spun it around and sealed it uh-huh. and sold, sold it to me. And that's what I just drank. I shared it with my brother. Wow. Yeah. I, I had never seen it done before right on the spot. And then, on the spot canning. So I had to buy skunk. I had to use skunk beer for my son-in-law. Who knew? So this, this pepper beer, uh, I had from the same place that I bought this one, I had one that was just pepper beer and it was, uh, like you didn't really notice when you were, when you, when you drank it, but then later there was just like this sort of, um, spicy pepper flavor in your mouth. After taste? After, yes. After, after zone. And do you like this? It's, it's fine. <laughs> I I'm not gonna like figure out how to get more of it. Ah, uh, well, lukewarm, but nice to have a beer. And you put in a little koozie, I see. I did to try and Very keep nice. it less lukewarm. Very nice. Well, we are we are going to be um, leaving here shortly for O'Duffy's Pub. Indeed, a shout out to O'Duffy's down in. Uh, Vine, we have live music tonight, and other and yes, it's true. T Bone, my brother's favorite, my favorite saxophone player, is there with his duo, mm. electric guitar and a saxophone, and two singers, and occasionally a harmonica player who sings, but not nice. frequently anymore. I did play when when you were gone. I went to a. Did I talk to you when I before I played with uh, Keith Scott? No. I went to the distillery in town. The just there's a couple of them, but the Green Door Distillery, and sure enough, they had this uh, guitarist, one man show, mic'd up on the back. There were four people there. The yep. entire audience was four people. He could care less. We had a blast. I ended up playing the second set with him. He looked a little nervous when I went, you know, you you say yes to a harmonica player. What if you get somebody who's like, oh, my God. Yes, we've we've heard your horror stories of. uh... Um, But he but in the opening tune, the look on his face when I played and he looked at me and he went, he was so relieved. Yeah, he was happy. Oh, you're one of the good ones. Yeah, I said, oh, God, thank God. You, You know what you're doing. So I, I won just one or two tunes. I mean, it was the whole set. And literally until there was no one left in the place. <laughs> advertising, advertising, advertising. People won't come if they don't know about it. Indeed. Well, so, you know, uh, everyone tell all your friends about uh, happyhour.fm. Um, quickly back to Succession. A thing I didn't fully grok when I... Do you understand the word grok? Yes. Understand. Uh, do you grok the word grok? Uh, the, when I watched it, but then when I heard discussions about it, uh, it made sense. Do you understand what's, having, what's happening with Shiv medically? Yes, she's pregnant. Yes. And... That's going to change things, although not in the time frame of the next five days, which is what we have left in the but season. This the season isn't five days in a row. The seasons are five days over a period of time. No, I think uh, I no, think I think they're wrong. in a row. Do you think the election is like in five days? Yes, like in they this they they say that. They literally said uh, he could be president in five days. Oh, well, now here's the thing about Shiv's pregnancy. 
you do know why that is a bigger deal than otherwise would be. Do you know who the father is? Got to be Tom. It's not Tom. Jesus, man, haven't you been watching? When's the last time her and Tom fucked? I don't, I don't know. I haven't been. They don't. They haven't. Who's the Remember father? Remember him then? asking her yeah, when yeah, they yeah. broke up? You know, I could try. I could try again. He's been trying to have sex. They haven't been able to have sex in forever. Okay. Because he, God, Who's the father then? Who do you think? I mean, it's not Greg. <laughs> I don't know. Who do you think? Nobody knows. Well, that was anticlimactic. Nobody knows. I have a suspicion. Well, voice it. He's a board member. He's incredibly handsome and suave. Ugh, really? And he's one of Kendall's good friends. Yeah. And that's why he felt obliged to help her up. He doesn't know she's pregnant, but he has feelings for her. Well, we, we also will. know that they they had an open marriage. True, 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 true. And they, not only an open marriage, but when they broke up, when she said, "I I hear you're are you seeing strippers now? You're dating models and." Right. You and Greg are, you know, are you doing all the positions here in the apartment? And and there she is. That may have been um, when she got pregnant. But that could, is going to be. Could be a sperm donor. Uh, no, 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 no. So it's. Um, the fact that they're such a dysfunctional, like they're uh, also weighing upon her is the, oh my God, how can I be a mother when I really have no role model for that? Um, so we'll, we'll, what we'll see what think she's going to have this baby. I don't know. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Lots of assumptions going on here. Lots of assumptions. So, should we switch over to uh, Chechenian gangsters? No, let's 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 just touch base on politics a little bit. Interspersed uh, with the with Russian the gangsters. Talk. Um, speaking of Russia. Um, So, uh, kind of the big news, I think, uh, since the indictment, of course, and how that slowly but surely winds its way through the system is the settlement that Fox News came to at the final day before their trial of, oh, I don't know, $787 million, three quarters of a billion dollar settlement. They were going after $1.2 billion. That's how close they came. Oh, my God, did they have the goods on Fox News. Yes. Don't take this to trial. You will lose it, and there will be $3 billion in damages because that's how much money we made. So that means that all the other lawsuits, all the other civil suits, paternity suits, rape suits, civil service, tax suits, all those people are going to say, I'm a lawyer and I just got 30% of $787 million. My firm is going to end up with 100 plus million dollars. One point six. Sure. Well, 106 million or whatever, whatever the math is. It's not too, uh, 180, 180 million. Yeah. So that's kind of wild. Like. And out of the, out of the woodwork, out of the 
woodwork, game on. Sharks in the water, blood in the water, blood and sharks together in the water, rare meat, beef, pink cells. Chum. How'd you like, uh, uh, here's the scene. Here's, here's, here's the scene from, uh, to switch to Barry immediately. The puke coming under the door when the Russian was, when uh, Noho Hank was in the cell and the guy in the cell next to him puked and it came underneath his door. Yeah. That... I'm not a big fan of the hallucinations in this in this season. Like, uh, I actually heard uh, I've been listening to a, a podcast where they actually are talking to Bill freaking Hader about each episode, and he, um, first of all, he said. You know, we talked with the HBO people, and and I told them I think this is the last the last season, and they were like, "You do you, man, whatever." Uh, like they gave him total free reign. Um, but then he talked about how he really wanted to uh, show, not tell, with uh, with these hallucinations, and like going back to when he and Fuchs uh, first met when he was a kid and stuff like that. Um, Fuchs knew his dad. Uh, yeah. I don't, have, I don't have the backstory on his dad fixed in my head. No, me neither. But, uh, but yeah, that, and, and it's kind of creepy that Fuchs may have noticed an 11 year old boy playing with his GI Joes and noticed some psychopathy there or something and killer uh, may have groomed, may have turned, may have groomed him into what he is, but well, it was when he was playing with the army men, there were, it was all killing. When his 11 year old self was playing with the army men on the bed, Right before the scene with Fuchs, he literally ran out of bedroom back in time because when Hader was hallucinating his former self, he was playing Army Man on the on the bed, and it was all about death and killing and cutting off a head. I think I don't. And then he ran from the bedroom, which a great bit of uh, freaking transition. Ran from the bedroom into the desert. Right. Because the dad was calling him, um, but you're right. There was something going on, even maybe just because he was playing army. That would be enough. You met. You got to figure if a kid's playing army, he's killing people. If you don't, if you're playing army and people don't die, you don't. It's not army. When we used to play army, we used to shoot somebody; they'd be dead. Yeah, they'd but lay, they're dead. <laughs> But not everyone that played that that played army uh, turned into a serial killer. Oh, no. Right? no, they didn't so, have the right tutor. That's right, all. Yeah, exactly. But one thing you knew about the kid at the age eleven that he had a fantasy about killing another man. So what? A lot of kids have that fantasy. A lot of kids play army. Sure. Right, but he took that. Well, we 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 uh, we hypothesize. Is an interesting. I swear, like the very first scene of Barry in episode one involved Fuchs being. Maybe there was some kill that he did, and then immediately the second scene was like Fuchs being in his hotel room, being you know, talking about how you got to do it more cleanly next time or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. yeah, you're right. You're right. Like Fuchs has yeah. been, Fuchs well, has been around it, since the very beginning. So what what is the uh, what is the nexus then between episode four of Succession uh-huh. and uh, the first two see, the first two uh, or either one of the first two Barry episodes? What's the nexus between those two uh, shows? 
You have 30 seconds. By nexus, you mean some sort of like uh, overlapping yes, Venn diagram over. thing. Your answer? I mean, besides like father issues. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Who was the man? Who was the actor who gave the speech oh, at Logan's freaking dinner? The conservative guy. Do you know who that was? No, I don't. Fuchs. It was Stephen oh, Root. God damn it. Yes, of it course was it was. Stephen Root. Of course it was. Yes. Damn it. <laughs> well done. Well, well, well done. Yes. Uh, God, why did I miss that? Um, I guess I wasn't like I watched. I watched Succession first, and then Barry. And if I had mixed that up, I for sure would have noticed. That's wild. I did. I did too. I watched Succession and Barry. I recognized him when he was giving the speech. Yelled out, "It's Fuchs!" <laughs> for Fuchs' sake, yes. Uh, and what an interesting. Uh, like what's what what's his what's his girlfriend's name? Uh, she's having a bad time. Who Connors? No. Oh 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 Barry's uh, Barry. uh Sarah. Yeah, she she tried to go back home, but her like her parents are shit. Her her dad's <laughs> not shit. Her dad's just, uh, just a doofus. So cloying, yes. Yeah. But her mother is a piece of work. She was so she could care less. She's ordering her coffee. That, that and... scene, that scene where 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 Sarah was breaking down in the car, and the mother was just like uh, dealing, was just like dealing with uh, you know whatever the parking meter or whatever it was that she was dealing with, just could not care less. Uh, and then when. In in this TV show that she's done, where she mentions uh, Sam by name, uh, her mother just flips out. And who like, is Sam? I, I didn't catch who Sam was. Uh, Sam is uh, some boyfriend. some guy who like abused her, and uh, rather than change his name to Dennis or something, uh, she just used Sam, and or her Eric. mother and her mother was like, uh, "What a." Like, why did you not change change his name? And she's like, why would anyone know? And she's like, well, I have to. And then the mother says, I have to go call Sam's Sam's family and talk about this. And this is so much more important than your emotional state right now. Yeah. Uh, it was just so. And then that she goes back to 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 Barry to to talk. Um, <clears throat> I, I have a question for you. Uh, the way I understand the way that like phones work, uh, it's it seems like we could and should have better technology to talk to a prisoner rather than just picking up one of these phones that you can hang up on the wall. We could, we could, but. but- there are one of the biggest reasons is there's no Wi-Fi anywhere where there is a prisoner. Fine, but and I'm Even not saying I'm not saying we need it, like wireless technology, but something um, better than a tin can and a string. Like I guess because uh, it's my understanding that with a phone you need some electrical boost to to push that what comes in as sound waves into the microphone uh, into being transmitted to a speaker on the other side but well true it, it was noteworthy now uh, there was something very bizarre about that scene do you know what it is do 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 very very bizarre very different Never heard, never seen it before when they were talking on the phone. Do, 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 
she held it away from her for a while. Nope. Well, she did, but that's not the answer. Nope. I give up. Bum, bum. Your answer. Oh, you gave up already before the song was over? Um, what is, showed, I don't know. When they showed her face listening, you heard his normal voice. Oh, when fuck. they showed his face talking, they you heard what she heard on the other end. It was exactly the opposite of every way you've ever seen it recorded. Nobody's uh, ever done that before. That's super interesting. Why would they, like, someone consciously made that decision? Yes. Well, Bill Hader made the decision, most likely. Probably. I, I mean, he's wow. the fault. He's the director. He, he directed this one. He he's wrote directing this. all of these, yep. Oh, did he? Is he directing all of them from the beginning or just this season? Just this season. Uh, he, he talks about how... Um, how uh, previously there there was a, some back and forth with the previous directors where because he had written it uh, and and uh, at the end of the last episode of the previous season uh, somebody came up to him and was just like dude why don't you just be the director for all the rest of the episodes because like cut out, cut out the middleman of yeah. Uh, someone trying to interpret what the fuck you you want, right. uh, just right. like do it yourself. Right. Um, but that 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 how interesting uh, that that and that uh, what that did for the scene was it made it feel Distance. even if you didn't notice it consciously as I did. The reason that I ended up noticing it because I I thought kind of out loud, wow, why does this feel so weird? Why is this? Why is this so jarring? Huh. This telephone conversation. And I thought, I know why. It was unsettling. The way that the way that you could see her face in his normal voice, but then when he talked, it was what she heard. How interesting! And at the end of it, you realize why that was taking place. The camera was next to him. Ugh. Yeah, but huh. interesting. Oh, it was it was. Of course, I'm gonna have to rewatch other, that. You can't, yeah, watch for that. Um, <laughs> the funniest, one of the funniest scenes was when uh, uh, Carlos, I think is his name, and and Noho Hank are eating. In their Arizona uh, yes. restaurant, I think they're in Arizona. Maybe they're in California. I don't know. California, I guess Southern California. And uh, they shoot. They're showing Carlos, and then they shoot to No Noho Hank, and he's wearing a black mm-hmm. sombrero and yes. real heavy chain uh, glasses and a poncho. Yeah. Oh, so, so good, funny. so good. Like that. That that moment was just like, goddamn. Uh, I was very people. I, I was like so you've... glad they showed him getting shot in the neck by the by the gangster, by the Mexican cartel gangster, who who said, "Oh, he just got a dart in his neck," and he said, "Oh, I thought so. I didn't want to be rude before he <laughs> before he collapsed from the poison because yes, yes. he's just so odd." He, he, that that actor. I don't know if he's done other stuff or no or what, I, or what I, he will I, do. But I read stuff about him uh, coming in and, and doing it. And he's so good. How, as a result of that, Bill Hader wrote him in in a way that he never had figured. Right, right, right. Like he was probably just like a a, a casual Made person, a passing, you know, a ep- episodic figure, as they say. Right. Not repeat episodes. So you know what's interesting about these first two, and and uh, and Succession wasn't like this, but Barry, the first two episodes of Barry feel like they're setting up more than a, a being a tremendous interest in and of themselves. It's more interesting what 
you're expecting to happen as a result of what you're seeing than what you're actually seeing on the screen. You just know that it's not, it, it hasn't gotten anywhere near a crescendo. And maybe, maybe one could say that about the two episodes of Succession, I suppose. Maybe you could. But I think it's a different kind of a drama that Succession pulls off that Barry doesn't quite pull off, which is that, uh, although some episodes Barry does, where what you're watching is just as important or more important than what it means about what's happening next. You're interested in what's happening is, but what you're what you're watching transpire is really the riveting story. Interesting. Whereas in you know he's in the prison, he sees he sees Fuchs, Fuchs. He's you know there's going to be more of that. Now that see the second episode ends with Noah Hank going from we got to help Barry, he's in trouble, he needs us, to we got to kill Barry. Right. After Fuchs tells him that Barry's turned. Well, it's as if Noho Hank should trust Fuchs, but Fuchs right. said that, that Barry's turned his informant to the FBI. And so. That's an go. interesting. Uh, and they also have parallels in that none of the characters are really likable. Like. Uh, f- for sure, in succession, all of those people are the are horrible people. Like there are no good you, people you like in Greg. succession. Greg, Greg is not a bad person, but he's really trying hard to be a, one of the bad people. <laughs> like he he's wants not very good at it. Right? He he's like, oh, and and I bet she was a slut or whatever, and just like right. trying to be right. the offensive type that he, he sees looks, all around him. He he looks like Jaws, but Jaws if everybody worked for Jaws. <laughs> so lame. And yeah. Tom, oh, Tom is Tom is a hateful, hateful character, but I like him. Yeah, I I like okay. watch. I love watching him. I I do enjoy I if, anytime Tom's on the screen I I am smiling I I do agree uh, he is a horrible human but uh, but there's that whereas in Barry uh, like I've always liked Barry because it's the uh, it's the I'm in a bad situation trying to do the best I can and things go badly. And, and so they, I have and to that's where the, <laughs> and that's where the humor comes from. Uh, like I didn't, I, I didn't want to be a, a contract killer, but like right. it, I was offered a bunch of money to do this one thing. And then, so I did. And now it, it appears that I am one of those. Uh, and like, even uh, Sarah, for example, she seems uh, relatively like we should like her, and she's just trying to do her best with her own flaws, uh, probably brought on by her horrible mother. Uh, well, but- well, she wanted to she wanted to scare and then hurt the woman who she screamed at on the phone that went viral that cost her her show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they, I mean they, they, they have their demons, all of them. But as as do all of us in real life. But Why was the uh, guy trying to kill her? I cannot remember. I remember the scene where it was all in silence because it was behind the... Uh, Behind the glass, she was beating the him to death with a bat. She killed yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She killed him, beat him to death with a bat. But I didn't put together why he was trying to kill her, unless it was somebody who was a fan of the other woman's show, who or, or trying to get to Barry somehow. I don't know. I've, I forgot. That's I, yeah, too well, I, I, you, you saying you forgot, it's as if you at one point knew. I don't, I don't know that that's true. <laughs> I, I, I know I didn't forget. I never knew. 
And if history's any judge, if, if I didn't put it together, I'm not altogether sure that you would. I'm, what if, just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm well, just saying. You miss a few things. Well, what are we talking about? The show called Harry. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go. This has been a blast. When when we miss a week, an hour doesn't seem like enough, and 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 it's not. So I agree. I gotta go. I gotta go. I, next I week gotta, it'll seem like too much. I, right? <laughs> All right. It probably will. Look, keep that clever edge to you. <laughs> All right, man. See you soon. See you, bro. <laughs> Okay, that's it for episode number 180. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 180, where you can find links to the dictionary about anadromous and et cetera, et cetera. You can help support the show at patreon.com slash happyhour. We would love you to do that. If you support at the Gin Martinis level, you can watch video of these shenanigans. See you next week. Au revoir.